So today uh, we're gonna collect some of, some of blood bags that can be handy uh, while solving uh, problems. And uh, in this lecture we're gonna cover uh, prefix and uh, two meters. And yeah, uh, since these techniques are not uh, an, an algorithm or something that you will learn beforehand, we're gonna start uh, with an equation and then we'll see how we can apply such techniques to solve such kind of problems. So, um, for that, uh, let's start with this question. And uh, in this question, we are given an array of numbers, and we are expected to find uh, the number of subarrays which whose sums becomes some number k. So, uh, I'll give you some minute to uh, to read the question and uh, we'll discuss the name or the brute force way first. So, is everybody clear with the question? Okay, so... Uh, <coughs> so, in the given example, uh, we are given numbers 1, 1, 1 in an array and we are expected to find the number of subarrays which sums up to uh, k. So in this example, uh, we can mark these two, and the sums becomes two, and we can have these two elements, or subarrays, starting from here up to here, and it's also sum up to two. So the number of subarrays that we can uh, generate from the given array will be, so our output will be, Okay, then if we are uh, coming with the question, uh, can somebody suggest some uh, basic or naive way of uh, solving this problem? Yes, uh, like in the SFO array, the numbers has to be conspicuous. You are, um, you're gonna chunk the given array into some parts, and the elements in that part has to be conspicuous. You can move as long as you find the longest one. You can find the longest, update and you keep moving and you find the largest number that has to be. Okay. Uh, uh, in that case, like we are we are not trying to find the longest one. We are just having, uh, trying to find sub arrays, which are sub to k, and uh, we are what we want to to know the numbers, only the numbers. My people suffer to be aggregating over the elements and finding my target, and then when I close I can find it. I increase my starting point for another equation, and I count on my target. So um, what Muru suggested is uh, starting from the, the first index, we're going to iterate over the whole array and see if we can find uh, some elements whose sum, whose sum becomes k. Then we're going to increase, uh, we're going to update our starting index and try to find another subarray whose sum, whose sum becomes k. Uh, so uh, this is basically uh, trying to find all the subarrays and see if the if the trying to find the sum of each subarrays and comparing it with our given k and if if the given uh, total sum of the given subarray is k we're gonna count our our subarrays so this will be the brute force approach so uh, one technique we can use on, on that question will be prefix sum so before going uh, over the over the solution, let's see what the uh, prefix sum uh, means first. So, uh, some of you might be familiar with, the, with this concept. Uh, so, to get the whole idea, prefix sum is uh, from the given sequence or given arrays, we are going to generate uh, another sequence whose at, in, at each index, the, that number is going to contain the sum of the previous numbers. And uh, at, each, at each index, we are going to add the, given, the current element to our prefix sum. 
and keep keep uh, traversing over the whole eye. So, is everybody clear with that? Okay, like two. Give an example. Oh, okay. You can use that as an example. So, if you have an array of ones whose length is three, uh, our prefix sum array will be. Start with the. We will start our cell with zero before starting the uh, iterating over the whole array. Then at each index, we're gonna uh, we're gonna add the current index to the previous prefix cell that we have accumulated so far. So we we, uh, we have zero at the beginning, and when we see the first uh, index, we're gonna add to that number. So one will be added here, and this number represents the running sum or the, the running total of the elements at each index and the, the running uh, at each index. So uh, we're going to add that index to itself, then we're going to update our index and we'll add the current index to the previous prefix sum that we have accumulated. accumulated. So we're going to add one to this one and this becomes two and we're going to update our index. and. Uh, we're going to add the given index to the previous running sum we have. So uh, the previous one was 2, and we're going to add 1 to the previous one, and this becomes 3. So our prefix sum array will be we do like this. So uh, this is of the general idea behind prefix sum. So uh, we can see this in an example. So we have. Uh, no, Nums array, which contains elements 3, 5, 2, minus 2, and 4, and 1. So our prefix um, array will, will be, will start with 0, so we'll add 3 at first, then we, our total sum will be 3, then we'll add 5, we'll add 2, and we'll keep going doing that, and we will exhaust, once we all exhaust our uh, Nums array, uh, we have already generated our prefix sum array. And here is a Python code that you can use to find the prefix sum, the prefix sum of the given R. So, so once we see uh, this technique, uh, can anybody suggest an improvement on the previous one? Because, like in the first uh, example, we have seen that we are doing the calculation. For for every subarray, right? Like for for each subarray, we're gonna add all the elements, and uh, we we'll, we we'll do that for e for every element. So can we see any improve? Can we do any improvement on that? So we can have two pointers, a starting pointer and an end pointer. So every time our sum reaches the the given number, which is k, if it's k, if it's k, the, the start point will be one step ahead, and then we will subtract the value where the start point comes from what we have sum, and then we continue increasing our the number, the total number, by one every time we hit a number, which is important. Okay, so um, what you are suggesting is like once we get to some uh, sum, which is which is k. Uh, we're gonna subtract the first one, yeah. and uh, um, then we'll move past that. Yeah. So once we find the total, point, our start point will become one to the point, and then we will subtract the from the sum, and then we will also see if we can find another sum which is equal to k or greater than k. Okay. And then we will find the value of the sum. Okay. Okay. So now we have two pointers. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you are you are on the right track, but are we find are we trying to find the the value k or are we trying to find the difference whose value is k, like okay. between the sums? We're looking for subarrays with a total of k, right? Yeah, the yeah. sums who have whose whose sum is k, yeah. yeah. So why trying to find the complement of the given array? We will start initialize our uh, dictionary. With zero, okay. Uh, let's use 
Okay, okay my job, huh? So I'll say it contains zero at the first. So uh, when I get the word that this array, and our sum is currently zero. So we will add the given element to our running sum, and our sum becomes one. And uh, our target is six, and we'll try to find if we have seen a complement of the given pillar, the given sum in our set. And uh, since like our sum is one, we we'll, uh, try to find minus negative five in our uh, sum. So there is no negative five in our sum. So it means we don't have a subarray who's in this at the given index and who's sign is six. So we'll just add one. Then we'll try to find um, the we'll try to find the complement of the second element and we'll add two to our current sum. And our current sum will be three. And we'll try to find it we have already seen 3 minus 6, which is minus 3 in our uh, set, in our same set. So we haven't seen a minus 3 in our uh, set. So we just add the current set in, in our set. And we we'll add the sub element, which is 7. And we'll try to see if we have seen uh, the component of 7. Minus six, one in our six. So we have one in our six. So we we have, we have already seen that they uh, can have uh, a separate between seven and one, whose sum becomes six. So our separate count is they want that thing. We can uh, initialize we add it to this one, and because we have seen uh, another sum whose um, whose difference is um, whose difference becomes k. So we'll add seven to our set, and um, on the next one we'll see we'll add minus one to our first uh, running sum, and this becomes six. So we we'll try to find um, the complement of six, which is zero. So Starting from like uh, when we started our prefix sum, we have added zero because without like or the whole array, the whole uh, array can become the sub array itself. So for that one, we need to have the complement. So see, zero is in the, in our set, so we'll add our count is one, and we can see that there are two sub arrays whose so sum becomes. But like, can you see another error with this one, for example? Uh, maybe the prefix can be duplicated? Yes, yes. Like, when we have a uh, duplicate prefixes, like for example, um, our, our, our uh, prefix sum will, may, might become 7 at some point, and uh, like, or like we can have Okay, our prefix sum will might become one at some point, and if we have uh, uh, another element whose like for one, for example, uh, if our prefix sum becomes one, we already have seen it here, but we haven't done anything. So if we have another seven coming up in our prefix sum, we only check it with this one. But we will not, we'll not be checking it with this one. But the the both of the subarrays can can form another subarray. So we should keep count of the prefix sum that we have, and instead of just adding one, we can add the counts. So you can see this one. So instead of having a set, we can have the, the dictionary, and our dictionary can start with zero and having a one as its count. And if you have, uh, when we get to um, an element, like for example, if we have um, zero as it's count as one, one in and
Okay, if we have seen seven, like instead of uh, pairing it with only one, we can pair it with two, and we can count that eleven again. Like we can count the both of the combination within the count, and we can update our count with the count that we have found on our dictionary. Uh, is it clear? Any question? Let's use another example. Let's have this array. We try to generate that pizza and uh, see if we can find uh, a, a, a separate pizza when it comes to. So, so our sum will start with zero and our count. Uh, we initialize our prefix dictionary with zero, which now is one. So uh, we'll try to grab the first element and add it to our sum. So our sum becomes one. And we'll try to, for, to look for uh, the complement of one in the array, which is one. So minus one. So our k is two. So we we'll try to find 1 minus 2 in our array, which is minus 1, in our prefix dictionary. So minus 1 does not exist, so we won't do anything, of, uh, anything to our count variable. Then our, we'll move to the second element, and our sum becomes 2. And we we'll try to find uh, the uh, complement of 2 in our array, which is 2 minus 2. Zero. We'll try to see if there is you know, pizza, if it exists. So we'll add the count of the uh, zero in our count array, in our count variable. So our count becomes one. So we'll move to the third uh, element. We'll add minus one to our current sum. And our sum becomes one. And we'll try to find the complement of one in the tower, if we are not adding the pixel. So, okay. for this one, we, we have found one, and it comes, becomes one, because we have always, we only see one, and when we move here, we'll add two, two to our prefix sum, then, yeah. So, uh, when we go to minus one, our, our sum becomes one, and we'll update the, count of one here and we will look for the minus one in our in our prefix and uh, dictionary minus one doesn't doesn't exist so uh, we want to add it to our common variable we will move to the forms uh, element and we will add one to our sum and we will also update the count of two so, so we try to find the complement of uh, two in our array, which is zero. Zero is already exists in our in our um, prefix dictionary. So we'll add the count of zero in our array, which is one, and our count variable becomes two. So. Um, we'll uh, move to the fifth element, then um, we'll add minus one to our current sum. Our current sum becomes one, and we'll try to find the, uh, the complement of one in our sum array. It doesn't exist, so we won't put anything to our um, count variable, but we can have to start with this one. So uh, then we move to the next element, which is minus one. Um, we add minus one to our sum, our sum becomes zero. Then 
uh, we will try to find the complement of a in our sum. It doesn't exist, which is minus two, but we have to uh, implement the count of zero, which is two. And yeah, uh, we will move to the next element, which is we already take this one, right? So we we'll move to this one. Our, we'll add the given uh, element to our sum, times 2, and uh, update this one. And we we'll try to find the complement of 2, which is 0, in our i. Then we have seen that there are uh, two zeros. So our count variable will be updated by 2, so times 4. And uh, we'll move to the next element. Is one, we'll add one, becomes three, and um, three. <laughs> then um, we're trying to find the three minus two, which is one in our um, in our previous sum, one of this with a count of three. So we'll update our count <coughs> to seven. Uh, our count work was 4, so we will add 3 in our count variable and it becomes 7. And we will move to the next one, minus 1. Uh, our sign becomes 2, <coughs> and the component of 2 will be 0. Right. To here, and um, 2 already, uh, 0 is in our supply, so we will update our count by 2, which is 9. So in this sub array, we, we, in this array, we can find uh, nine sub arrays with some figures. So you can find the code uh, here. So the new time and space complex of this solution becomes of a because we are we are we are only uh, iterating over the array once, and we we'll, we'll, we are trying to. Um, to find the prefix sum from the dictionary, which is O1. So our time complexity will be O of A. And that, that will be it. So uh, we'll try to do one more exercise on prefix sum. So um, you can see the question and we'll move to the exercise. And as a follow up, you can't use division. So uh, another um, method, uh, another technique that we will really see after this, um, we will see another technique uh, right right now. So we uh, will start with question again. So you are given a, a string s, and you you are supposed to find the length of the longest substring. So that contains uh, unique letters. I think you have to cover this one in our in your string picture, but uh, we can talk about it and we can see some techniques to improve this question. So um, I'll give you some time to uh, read the question, and we will start with the name way of doing this one, and we can see another technique to, to optimize that one. Um, if everyone is clear with the question, uh, can somebody suggest the name or the port force we are approaching this uh, problem? Okay. Uh, this question is going to be going over the list, over the screen, and then when you find the difficulty, you start over from the next starting line and you move over the list. And then you move the yeah. yeah, so the brute, the brute force for this one will be starting from every index, you will try to to uh, to go over the whole array and try to to maximize the links. When we find a repeating character, we're gonna uh, move our pointer to the next one, and we we will try to see if they, we can generate another sub array, uh, longest sub array from the given index. So um, so one technique that we can use to uh, optimize this one will be sliding window. So everyone is familiar with the windows, right? 
And the uh, sliding window is um, like a window like this one. <laughs> so it has a fixed size and it can go uh, slide through the. Yeah, it can uh, slide and. Uh, the same technique can be used to find uh, to uh, to pro to solve problems related with substrings and sub arrays, and it's a very popular technique in which we can use uh, uh, to find something in our windows or in in our arrays and uh, slide every uh, slide uh, on every uh, element, and it's a very good technique to reduce the running time of the many algorithms uh, from n cube to n square and from n square to of n solutions. So, yeah. is there any um, team maker in the group one who is expert in sliding windows that you can put? Yes, uh, for, every, uh, for uh, further information you can ask Tumsa. <laughs> he is expert in uh, sliding windows. <laughs> So um, yeah, you, uh, you can see the visualization here. Uh, we have a window of length uh, five, and while sliding, we can uh, remove the last element from our window, and we can add the new elements from the uh, front of the in the given window. And we can use this technique to uh, optimize some of the problems. And uh, sliding, uh, side, uh, it's not always the size, the size of the window is not always fixed and there are two types of sliding windows. The first one is with a fixed window length K, some K, and the other one is a dynamic or resizable window. And we, we depending on the question, we might use a different uh, version of sliding window. And while using the uh, fixed length sliding window. Uh, we are trying to find something in our window and uh, it might be uh, different problems like uh, given some window length k, uh, we, we might be asked to find the maximum or minimum uh, average of the elements from the whole array and we might be asked to find the maximum or minimum of this some value in our window from the given array, or we might even be asked to find the, the median uh, value from the given array. Given array. So, uh, in this in this in this type of problems, we will have a fixed length of arrays uh, or window, and we will just uh, slide that one, trying to find the maximum or the minimum of some um, expected <coughs> output from the given elements. And uh, for the uh, dynamic or resizable ones, uh, we, we, we might have uh, two pointers on our uh, arrays and uh, we will try to maximize the given, try to, find, to maximize or minimize the given window depending on some criteria. And we will look for the, for such criteria in our array and we will try to maximize that one or minimize the length of the array or length of the window depending on that. So this one is also a very important skill or tool that you can use to solve problems. So uh, we'll go back to the previous question and uh, see how can we apply uh, this thing. So you have two indexes, that is start at the zero position. And then you also have an array of 26 characters. And you move your index to. And each time you move your index to, you mark in your array the characters, the count of characters that you have seen so far. And each time you check to see if you have anything that's bigger than one. So if you do, then uh, this time you go with your left index. And then uh, each each time, so this when you go with your left index, you decrease the counts from the array. And again, you check to see if uh, you have reached the position where there are any characters. Need to be that way. 
Yeah, uh, it's very Nazi. And like why why uh, moving the indexes? You know, you have also have to keep track of the <coughs> Yes. Yeah. So uh, what Adrian suggested was uh, to have a count of uh, to have an array of 26 to keep the count of the uh, characters in our array. And every time we found another element, we we try to to maximum to decrement the first uh, in, increment the count of the given uh, character and check if the if every other character is one. It's not like the count of every character is one. If if it's not, we're gonna uh, move our left index and continue uh, uh, trying to decrement until we find the all elements with count one. We'll move the left index. So uh, yeah. Uh, this is a working solution. Is there any improvement that you wanna like maybe suggest? So one improvement which is I think not easy to implement. It's, I mean maybe it's easy but it could be probably is that you can uh, always keep the count also the last index you have seen the letter. So at the moment you in go above one, you can directly jump the left index to that last position of that so that you don't have to. Instead of, yeah, instead of moving the left element uh, by one, by one you can uh, uh, jump the left index immediately to the uh, last index that we have seen uh, of the character and try to, yeah, try to maximize that one. Mm -hmm. So we can put in charge of the indexes. Um, like how? You have to keep track of the indexes of every item. So if you want to view, let's say, a form and then you can a form, you also have to store what you found in the index. Yeah, so uh, like, uh, like accumulating all the index, is it like necessary? Yeah. Instead of like uh, trying to keep every index of the given character, we can just keep track of the last index that we have seen the given character and uh, when we see the that character again we can just skip to that character straight to that character and uh, like while we are skipping we have to keep track of the uh, like there might be another characters whose index is like before is we have to uh, skip the characters the left uh, pointer to, uh, to the upper one and we, can, we have to yeah, take care of the one that has before. So, if we can find the code here, uh, uh, we can actually uh, try to solve one problem from the using sliding windows. And to, uh, we we'll try to approach this problem together, and uh, you'll uh, have another question to work on later on. So, um, so this I have already shared the link on the Telegram group, so you can see the question. So um, we are we have a row of trees in which the eyes index indicate the type of the tree or the type of the, the fruit that the tree produce. And in this, uh, the description of the question seems a little bit uh, big, but uh, we can work on together too. And the numbers in the array represent the type of fruit, fruit that we produce. And uh, there are two rules in the, in the given question. You, you can, uh, you can start at uh, any index in the array, and uh, you have two baskets, and the uh, two of them can hold as much food as, uh, as possible, but the, the type in each basket should be uh, the same. Like, uh, they, should be, they can be different in, the different, uh, in different baskets, but the ones in one basket has to be the same. And while starting from a uh, given index and trying to pick the first starting from that index, 
uh, you can either uh, pick that uh, fruit or you you have to stop. Like if you cannot uh, pick that fruit, you have you can you have to stop. And the other uh, rule is you can uh, you will stop when you uh, reach to the end of the area or like when the, there's no there's uh, nothing left. So um, yeah. This is basically the question. It's a little bit like dingy and big, but uh, we can we can break it down to uh, a simpler description. So, um, any suggestion? Or is it like um, is it easy to see that this question is uh, asking like about the sliding window? Yeah. So basically. Uh, it's, it's a, a type of uh, sliding window because we we have to uh, we have to have the maximum number of fruits in our basket. So in order to have that one, we have to uh, maximize the, our windows and find uh, find the maximum bangers whose uh, whose type fruit type is at most two because we only have two baskets and we can only hold two types of fruit. So, uh, if we are clear with that, I think we can uh, we can uh, we can run it over an example and go to the implementation. So, if our index, if our start index starts from zero, uh, we we can we can keep. Uh, we can take this fruit because uh, we don't have any. So we can uh, add our fruit to the to our basket and to this basket. And our total fruit will be. And we can jump to the second one. We can put the second one in another basket and, um, and like increment our total fruit count to two. And while jumping to this one, uh, we can see that we cannot add three to end of the basket, so we have to move the, our start index to uh, we have to move the start index to until we uh, exhaust one of the fruits. So we'll move our start pointer to one and we'll empty the first basket and we can add three into our basket and we can implement our total first count by one. Yeah, we don't have to play because we have only One type of uh, one type of uh, one type of one type of type three and one type of type two. Our total count to be two. Two and our maximum to the start four. Zero and it will be uh, it will it will also update every time we find the bigger numbers. So currently. It will then uh, we will move our pointer to the next one, and we can add two, two in our basket because we already have the same the same type of food in our basket. So we implement this one by two, and our total count becomes two, and uh, three, and our maximum fruits will also be updated because we have found. Uh, a window which can uh, contain three fruits and we'll update the uh, index up here and we can still hold the this fruit in our basket so we add one to uh, to we'll add one fruit to this basket and we implement our cell phone to four and uh, 
maximum of the cost has to be more compatible. So since we have exhausted the whole array, we can stop at this point and uh, return to the other uh, output. So, is everybody clear with the question, with the solution? Mm -hmm. In that case, we can uh, jump into uh, implementation. So, uh, you remember that to some problem? Everyone? Okay, so to sum is like given an array, you are you are you are gonna you are gonna check if the given the, the two elements in the given array sum up to some k, some value. That's it's a popular question. And uh, if we are given with an input of a sorted uh, array, uh, how are we gonna put that one? You would have two pointers on the other ends of, on the opposite ends of the eye. And then every time you have, every time their sum is higher than the, the sum is looking for, you move our right pointer, like the sum is low, you move our right pointer. Actually, you move our right pointer to the, you move right pointer. Yeah. <laughs> so, since we have seen the sum of the two, so, uh, let's regulate that one. So uh, if you are given with a given array and our target sum is 6, uh, since the arrays are sorted, we can start from each end of the array and we will try to find the sum of the elements as our pointers at that index. Then if our, if our sum is greater than the target sum, we are going to move the right pointer by 1 and uh, if the the sum of the two elements is less than the target sum, we're gonna move the left pointer by one. So in the example, we have seen that the sum of one and six is seven, and our target sum is six. So our current sum is seven. So since the current sum is Seven. We have to move our right pointer one by uh, one, one inside in the inside the array. So we we'll move the right pointer here, and our sum becomes one plus four, which is five. Since our sum is less than the target sum, we we'll move the left pointer by one. Then the the left pointer will be pointing to two, and our sum becomes. So since we have found the two elements in our arrays that sum up to, that sums to our target sum, we can return to. And this is one of the application of sliding windows, but with different directions. Instead of going forward, uh, we, we might have to find uh, we might have to move the pointers in opposite direction. And yeah, the other one is the equidirection or the one we have seen in the in, in the morning, and uh, there, there might be uh, two types of uh, pointers, one going slower and one going faster. And in, in, those, in those scenarios, we're going to use unequidirectional pointers. And a uh, classic example for this one is cycle detection in Lincoln list. So in the Lincoln list, if we try to find, if, if we, our target is to find if the, there is a cycle, we can start from the uh, head of the linker list and we'll move our first pointer by two and slow pointer by one. And if they cut, eventually catch up, we can say there is a cycle in the linker list. And this one, this one is also another application of sliding windows. And uh, so what we use a sliding window when the problem involves some some type of sequences and. Um, like it's, if it's an array or some string, we're gonna use a pointer and 
uh, we will use sliding window. We will use uh, sliding windows, and uh, our target will be trying to find the something that's the longest one or the shortest from the given sequence, and that will be uh, the application of sliding windows. And we will move on with the uh, exercise. But I think uh, since you haven't finished the uh, one. Uh, we have given you the warning. Uh, you can start with that and continue with this one. And there's also another uh, exercises on sliding windows. We sh I'll share you the, the slides and you can continue working on that. Any question? Okay. Thanks for your time.